Is it coffee or is it anxiety? Who knows? Probably a bit of both. Hello! I am so excited to have you here with me for another video. I have not been this excited to film a video in a really long time. Like, I'm just so excited about this entire concept and I hope you guys are too from seeing the title. So, I am going to be following a makeup tutorial as a blind girl that's designed for blind people. I love makeup. We all know this. If you have been on this channel for any number of months, years, you know I love makeup. I've done an array of makeup content through the years that I've had this channel. And I just have to say, I am fully self-taught. Um, I wanted to start wearing makeup when I was 12 years old and my mom took me to a MAC makeup counter because she was like, I don't know where to begin with this. And they picked the right products for me and then told me where to put them, but I was entirely self-taught. I would listen to makeup tutorials on YouTube from Sighted Girls and just wing it and give it a go. I practiced and practiced and practiced. I made tons of mistakes. I've come a long way. I am still by no means perfect at it. I am not super skilled by any means. I am not the expert on blind makeup, but it's something I have a lot of fun with. And a lot of the tips and tricks that I use as a blind makeup lover that I've shared with you over the years are things that I came up with myself. I made them up. I didn't hear them anywhere or from anyone. They're just things that I learned through experimenting over many years that I was like, wow, this is really helpful. For example, like using mini sized mascaras. That's something I just like happened to discover on my own. And I was like, this is the key to me doing mascara way easier and better. So things like that are just things that I came up with on my own. Um, counting how many strokes in the palette and then how many strokes on my face. That's another thing that I just came up with on my own. I didn't hear it from anyone. And the reason for this is because when I was younger, I took life skills classes. And when I was older, I took life skills classes. But there was a period of a couple years there in the middle where I did not take life skills classes. And that age, 12, 13, 14, when I was starting to play with makeup is right at that time when I wasn't taking any life skills classes for the blind. And by the time I started taking life skills classes at the school for the blind, again, um, I had already learned how to do my makeup. So I didn't bother tapping into those classes. That said, I think it's awesome that like basic resources exist for people who are blind and want to start exploring makeup. Um, I found this resource. It's hadley.edu. I have a lot of parents of blind children and a lot of people who are new to the blind community that come to me and ask, what's a good resource? Hadley.edu. I'm going to link it below. This isn't sponsored. They have no idea who I am. Um, it's just a resource that I found that I think is really great. Um, and they have tons of tips and tricks, how-to videos, workshops. So I'm going to link that down below. And that is the makeup tutorial that I am following today. They had a makeup tutorial for face, eyes, and lips. And I am going to be doing a full face following the Hadley makeup tutorial tips and tricks. Now, going into this, I will say um, some of these are things that I already incorporate. Some of these things are completely new to me. I've never heard them, never tried them before. So I'm very excited. That said, it is definitely for beginners. All of their educational video series are for people new to the blind community or who have not taken a lot of life skills classes. All of their classes are completely free to sign up for, by the way. It is definitely like if you're new to blindness. If you've been in the blind world for a long time, you've taken lots of courses and classes, you have good skills and strategies, their stuff, at least the videos that I watched, won't be that helpful for you. But I am going to be strictly doing what they've advised me to do. I am not going to do what I usually do. Um, but as we go, I will tell you if I think it's a useful tip or not, and what I would do or recommend instead. So without further ado, let's just jump into it. You might notice here in front of me, I have a lot less makeup than I usually do. This is all of the products that I supposedly need based on their tutorial. Um, we are doing a very minimal face, apparently. Uh, yeah, definitely lots, lots of products that I would usually have on this table in front of me that I do not today. So we'll get into it. Um, the first tip they had was to put your foundation in the fridge. I've heard many people say to put your skincare in the fridge. I've never heard anybody say to put your foundation in the fridge. But alas, yesterday I stuck my foundation in the fridge because presumably you're doing your makeup once a day. So it's sitting in there for like 24 hours before you do your makeup next. So it has been there for 24 hours as if I did it yesterday morning and I'm back this morning to do it again. I'm very intrigued. 
and I'm gonna go grab my foundation out of the fridge. <laughs> I made it to the fridge. Now I have to find it. Did you move my foundation? Oh. Now listen, friends. Also yesterday, my mom said, <laughs> so I didn't tell my mom I was doing this. So yesterday she's like, um, you have foundation in the fridge? And I was like, yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> totally normal. Nothing unusual Nothing about that. Nothing to see here. <laughs> um, now, I am always cold. I'm one of those girlies who is just always cold and only likes warm things, which is why I never put skincare in the fridge. I would never. That on my face, cold? Uh-uh. No, not about it. But we're following the Hadley makeup tutorial. So freaking freezing foundation it is, my friends. And this is supposedly to help you be able to feel where it is on your face. Oh. Um, they also recommend using a head wrap. I have some of these linked in my Amazon storefront and I'll have all, any of these products that I can link in my storefront, I will have linked below if you're interested in purchasing any of them. So linked down below, but I do use one of these for my skincare because I do have bangs and I have used them like occasionally for makeup in the past, but it's not something I do every time I do my makeup. I usually just honestly push my bangs back like this, but we're doing what Hadley told me to do. So we're prepared, we're ready. So now they said to pick your tool, whether that is a sponge, uh, a brush, or your hands. I love using my hands for things like a CC cream, a BB cream, a tinted moisturizer, a serum foundation, um, something really easily spreadable, creamy, light. Um, but today I am using the um, matte foundation. Now there is a reason I picked this specific foundation for today. I love the It Cosmetic CC Cream um, as kind of my day to day, but this one uh, is the Estee Lauder Stay in Place Double Wear Foundation. This is matte. I like this for the summer because I have front bangs and it just is less oily. It also just stays on your face like forever. So in the sweaty summer months, you're good. But the reason I picked this today is because friends, Hadley ain't doing any skin prep. There is primer doesn't exist to Hadley. <laughs> so we've got no primer, which I would personally recommend. Um, and also this that's paint. Because, that's why my makeup comes off, right? Yeah. Because I don't put primer Well, on. you don't prime and you don't set. Nor do the folks at Hadley. <laughs> so, um... We're old school. <laughs> the Hadley folks, only foundation exists. This is the only complexion product, okay? Hadley is not doing primer. She's not doing concealer. And she's not doing setting powder. The only advice she had was foundation. So, personally, I would advise using a primer or something to prep your skin. And I would absolutely advise using concealer and setting powder, but if I'm not able to set my face with powder, best believe I'm using a matte foundation because this thing is not gonna budge and it's not gonna look super shiny um, because usually I rely on setting my foundation so that it doesn't slippy, slippy slide around my face, but we can't do that today because we're just strictly following their tips. Now they said to dot it around your face. Wow, that's cold. <laughs> Think of a hot summer's day. It ain't hot today. We're dotting it. This is usually how I do it. I usually dot. I don't use um, my fingers for matte foundation. I always use a sponge. So I'm gonna go in. Oh shoot, I already just started doing my own thing. <laughs> <laughs> they said to go in circular motions up the face. That is what we are doing. With the sponge? They said a sponge, fingers, or a brush. Okay. With a matte foundation, I definitely recommend a sponge. Also, please wet your beauty sponge. Please, please, please. The amount of people who don't wet their beauty sponge makes me so sad. It's gonna work so much better if you wet it. So many stages. So many it's. It's so, so many things. It's so funny to me. I, okay, I will say I don't feel like having cold foundation is helping me at all. Like it doesn't, this is per, this might work for some of you. It doesn't for me. It's definitely worth giving a try. I don't feel like it is like helping at all. It doesn't really make a difference for me. So this is not something I will continue to do. They also recommend counting on each side to make sure you're putting the same amount of product on each side and the same strokes. With foundation, I don't feel like that's applicable. I do feel like that makes sense for other products. I guess for dotting it, it does. Like you wanna make sure you're dotting the same amount on each side of the face. So you're getting the same amount of coverage. But in terms of like actually blending it in, you gotta work quick. So I'm not like focused on amount of strokes. I'm focused on blend this before the foundation like sets on my face. Because especially with a matte foundation, it's gonna set pretty quickly. You've gotta work fast. Um, and, work it, work it, and work it. if I'm using my hands, I'm just kind of, there's no strokes, you know? I'm kind of just mushing like you would with a face moisturizer. So 
I would recommend for beginners CC creams, BB creams, tinted moisturizers, light coverage because it's going to be a lot easier. You're not going to have to worry about blending as much. Higher coverage means it's more obvious when you have stroke lines, when you have any separation, when you've missed a spot. Um, so definitely for beginners, I would recommend lighter weight foundations and products because it's just going to be more foolproof and you can work your way up to higher coverage as you get more comfortable with your skills. Now, in terms of concealer, again, they don't have any tips for that. My personal tips, or what I personally do, is I always conceal under my eyes because I don't know if I have dark circles or bags, so I'd rather be safe, safe than sorry and cover that up, um, especially if you are going with the lighter coverage foundation. It's not going to cover that, so you're going to want to go in, and you can use you know, your same sponge that you just used. You can use your finger, warm it up, tap it in, um, and I also use my fingers to feel on my face wherever there might be blemishes. So for example, I have a few blemishes on my kind of chin area right now. If I was concealing, I would just feel those, put the concealer on, and then blend it out. So there's the base. Hadley also did not recommend anything for bronzer, contour, or highlight, so we ain't doing any of that today. Usually um, after this, I would do my concealer, then I would set with a powder, then I would go in with my bronzer, then blush, then highlight, but we are going straight to bronzer as per Hadley's recommendations. Now, don't get me wrong, this is like a really great way for beginners to start. You don't need all these extra things, although I would recommend like setting and concealing. You don't need to bronze. You don't need to, I mean, you don't need to wear makeup, period, if you don't want to. I'm just saying, if you want to, a good basic is just foundation blush. Um, but if you want to be doing a more full face, um, adding a bit more dimension, because what foundation is doing, I'm just describing this for people who can't see, what foundation does is it takes out pretty much all dimension. Apparently, I've been told, natural faces have color variation. And so when you put foundation on, it takes all of that away. So by contouring, by bronzing, by highlighting, by adding blush, you're adding more shape, dimension, color, and life back into a stripped canvas that foundation has laid down. And so that's why I think it's good to do those things, but you don't by any means have to. None of this is required. Though I would love to see Hadley expand their makeup tutorials and get into more advanced things. Like even I would love to learn some, some things like um, tips and tricks for applying false lashes, liquid liner, winged liner. Those are all tutorials I would love to see from them or multicolored eye looks, um, cut creases. Like I would love to see them get a little more advanced. Um, but right now, it's pretty basic. So we're gonna go in now with blush. Actually, I messed up. I forgot one of their tips. They recommended putting foundation on your neck and blending up to your chin. So let's go in and do that. Now, I usually blend what's on my chin down under my jawline. I don't usually go down on like this far down onto my neck, though I do put my bronzer down on my neck like that. So I'm just doing as I've been told. Okay, how does that look? Good. Yeah, I like it. I like it having it on the neck. <laughs> <laughs> all right, maybe I'll start doing my neck. Comment and let me know, do you put your foundation all the way down your neck or just under your chin like me? Let's discuss. Okay, now we're on to blush. So this is a technique I've never heard of or tried. They said to use your middle and index, middle and index finger. So you point your finger and your middle finger to Find your cheekbone and create a V. They said to keep the blush above your nostril. I don't know if I just have a really short face, but like my cheekbone and my nostril are like right, right in line with each other. Oh yeah. Do you see that? Yeah. Like, I do. yeah. I, do I have a small face? I mean, I do. I'm I'm yes. small, but like that just seems okay. Anyways, so above your nostril, find your cheekbone, index, and middle finger to create a V as your guide. I'm gonna take my blush brush. Dab it in there. For beginners, I would recommend getting less pigmented blushes and always checking how pigmented it is with a sighted person in your life as you're practicing. I personally don't like using cream blushes, cream bronzers. Uh, I find them tricky, but it might work for you, so feel free to experiment. Things that I personally like to avoid are those kind of cream-based products, uh, liquid liners, things like that. And at the beginning of my journey, I definitely avoided things like loose powders, but now that I'm a little more skilled, I'm more comfortable using loose powders. So just some tips. 
Okay, so I'm making the V. And then they said use the brush. Let me make sure it's correctly placed. I feel the like it's slanted. So I make sure the higher slant is like the top of my face. I don't know if I'm describing this well. I'm really nervous. This feels weird. Okay. This this is really awkward. Ah, oh, this is a pretty good job though. Well, we'll see when I remove it. <laughs> okay. There's a little bit of powder around your no nose. Well, we'll get to that tip. Yeah. Okay. I, I would say it's a little uncomfortable. It's a bit high. I wouldn't usually... Would you guys like... I know I've done like tutorials in the past, but would you guys like me to specifically do like a follow-up video where I do m their version versus mine? That's a good idea. Let me know. Okay, we're doing the other side. And they did recommend tapping off the excess. And then sweeping up towards your hairline. Okay. Number one too much. Uh, one cheek is lower and the other cheek's higher. It's just really hard to do. Like, I don't... Okay, that's just, a, again, a personal tip. I have no, like... I feel like I'm bashing them. I'm not trying to. I think it's so awesome that education like this exists, especially because it's something that I didn't really have. I had to I had to self-teach. I'm personally, honestly, just trying to experiment and see if any of these tips would work for me or other people, give my opinions and share some things that worked for me that maybe they can incorporate. Hadley, I'd be happy to chat. If you end up seeing this video, I'd be happy to talk to you guys and share some of my feedback. Uh, let me know. So they then said to take a cotton pad to wipe off the excess. Personally, what I would do is take a powder brush. I would take a fluffy powder brush that has nothing on it. I usually set with a translucent powder, so my fluffy setting brush is always clean. I mean, it's not always clean, but it's always, it doesn't have like colored product on it. So what I do when my blush is too heavy, I go too heavy handed with it, I will use my fluffy brush and blend, 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 over blend. We, we love an over blend. But that's not what they said to do. So I'm doing what they said and taking a cotton pad to wipe. I feel like I've even come a long way since like my makeup tutorial years ago that I did. Like I've just developed my skills further. Yep. I'm again, still not great. Okay. Is that's that- pretty good, yeah. Um, it's kind of evened out a bit more on the right from the rubbing, but it still isn't even on yeah. the other side, yeah. See, for me with blush, I just kind of go by feel where I'm placing it on my face. Like, I don't need the finger guide. I find the finger guide actually gets in my way from being able to properly blend. Um, so just a personal opinion, and that's what my cotton round looks like now. So now that we have done our complexion, because as I said, we're not doing bronzer, contour, highlight, none of that, we are going to go into eyes. We're starting with liner. Now liner is usually the last step or the second last step when I do my eyes, but I'm just going in the order that they share in their tutorial. So we're starting with liner. So they recommend, of course, having it sharp because the sharper it is, the easier it's gonna be to get that precise line. One of their general tips is that if you struggle to keep your hands steady, um, to either hold the elbow close to your body or to place the elbow on a hard surface like a table. So that's just one of their general tips in case that might help you. They said take the thumb of your free hand to pull the outer corner tight. Anytime I'm pulling skin around my eyes, I cringe a little because I think all of the wrinkles I'm causing, that sensitive, delicate skin around my eyes, but Lord knows I'm not that sensitive and delicate with my eyes like I should be. Usually what I do is I put my finger on my brow bone and I lift upwards because that kind of straightens the skin. That's one technique that I use, but this technique is to pull the skin outward and then use your index finger to mark your starting point. Now they say to use short strokes and to count them. Again, this isn't an area where I personally feel like I would need to be counting because you, you, like, you feel as you go. Like you know you're starting in one point and you're ending in the other. You, I guess, yeah, it, does, it doesn't make sense to me, but if you feel you need to count, you can do so. This is, this is so awkward to me. Damn, I'm like really struggling with this. This is like not easy. I don't know why this is making it actually harder to do my makeup. Like how do I, you know what I mean? Cause if my finger is like marking my starting point, it's hard for me to get the liner tip to the right place. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry you guys. I don't know why I'm struggling with this so much. Like, this is so awkward. 
awkward. That feels horrible. <laughs> it's going quite thick. This is not easy. Okay, if I look a hot mess after this, please don't judge me. These are all new techniques and tricks to me, so I'm struggling. Now they said simply to use your, like the thumb of your free finger. So, but I'm left-handed, so I'm not gonna switch my hand. So I'll just do this way. I'll just reverse my hand and use my index finger for this eye. Now they say to use your fingertip to smudge it out. Um, I would recommend buying an eyeliner that has a smudger brush. I have a couple linked in my uh, Amazon storefront that I use, one from Tarte and one from Benefit. It's the Benefit Bad Gal Lash. I really like the Benefit Bad Gal Lash the best. It's a very creamy formula. It glides on smoothly. And then I use the blender brush on the other side to smudge it out. And that way it does kind of smudge out the lines, blurs it a little so that if you do have any bumps, um, or it's not perfectly straight, it kind of like smooths it out, blends it, blurs it, and makes it look a little more intentional. So I would recommend getting a smudger brush, but they said to use your finger. Did that help at all? Mm -hmm. Yeah, not bad. Okay, so let's go with eyeshadow. Again, it's a very basic eyeshadow look. They don't go into um, many like options. They don't talk about doing a crease at all, they don't talk about highlighting the brow bone. Um, their only tips are to practice with a dry applicator first. I personally do not recommend using a sponge tip applicator for uh, anything, but especially eyeshadow, I would recommend using a brush if you don't have the money for a brush, you don't have access to a brush, or you just don't want to buy a brush. I would recommend using your finger, uh, especially with like shimmer shades. It can actually be better to use your finger because you can really pack it on more. Um, and using your finger is going to really help you make sure you're placing it where you want to. I personally like to use brushes for the most part. Now, all they recommend is taking your shade. So we're just using one shade because that's kind of how they instructed. And to sweep it across your lid. So we've done that. Now this language I found extraordinarily confusing. They said to sweep like under your crease and then to sweep above your crease. Now I would consider this to be my crease where my eyeball ends and my bone begins, if that makes sense. So if I here sweep below the crease and above the crease, I would personally sweep across my lid and then across above my brow bone, like on my brow bone. That's what I would do. But that's only going to look okay if you're using a light shimmer shade that you would usually highlight a brow bone with. That is not gonna work if you're using something like a brown shade or a blue or a pink or whatever. It's only gonna work if you're using something that is shimmery that you generally highlight your brow bone with. Um, they didn't go into suggestions for crease. Something that I would suggest for crease color is using a matte color. You can either go lighter if you just want to kind of blend out and transition your lid shade into your brow bone, or you can go darker to deepen up the crease and make it a little bit more dramatic. But I am, I am doing as I kind of gathered they want, how I perceived what they said, because I can't see the screen of the video they played. So if I hear below the crease and above the crease, I'm going below and I'm going above. Feels like it's probably not very blended, but that's why I went in with a shimmer shade, just in case, a very light shimmer shade. Now on to mascara. I would recommend not using waterproof um, generally because it's going to be A, much harder to remove. You're going to need pretty specific makeup removers to really get that off. Um, also, if you do make blobs, it's going to be harder to remove them. But I'm being a risk taker today, I guess. And we're going in with waterproof. Now, one of their tips for mascara was to use a sample size mascara wand. I'm not saying they got that from me, but I never heard it before I said it. So I'm a claim it. I'm a claim it. I'm a claim that that was my idea because I've never heard anybody talk about that before I discovered it and shared it. But maybe I'm just tooting my own horn. I probably am. I'm pretty insignificant in the grand scheme of life. So that was one of their tips. 100% I agree with that but I'm going in with a regular size mascara because again, I'm a risk taker and I'm a rule breaker and I don't have a sample size mascara at the moment. At least one that I like. I have one, but I don't really like it. It's from Rare Beauty. I want to try more of their stuff because it's the only thing I've tried from them and I don't like it, 
I feel like there's got to be better. So anyways, you can honestly go to like a makeup counter and ask for a sample size mascara. A lot of them will give them to you. You can also go to Sephora around Christmas time. They release a set of sample size mascaras. That's what I used to do. That's how I found this like hack. And I, it would get me like a year worth of mascara in the mini sample sizes. You can also buy mini sample sizes. A lot of brands do sell them. I know Too Faced sells better than Sex in a sample size. Uh, Benefit sells Roller Lash and Bad Gallon sample sizes for travel. So check that out. They also said to practice with a dry mascara wand. Definitely. That's a really great tip. Um, you can also get these for free at makeup counters or you could purchase a, a set of them on Amazon. Now I'm most excited about their mascara hack because I've never tried it. And as I said, I'm self-taught. So I've I'm never excited. had, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, so I've never had like a, yeah. a blind makeup person tell me how to do my mascara. I've just kind of practiced and figured it out. So I'm really excited to like have a resource for the blind tell me a trick that might work for me. Um, they did not talk about curling lashes. I would personally usually curl my lashes. Now, what they said is to take your fingertip and touch the end of the wand and find your inner corner. Now they said to pinch the inside of your nose so that you're not going to get a blob on the inside of your nose. Yay. And that's why I'm so excited about this because if this works, life is better. But that said, because I've just touched the end of the wand as they suggested, I now have mascara on my finger. So to pinch it would put mascara on my finger. So if you used your pointer finger like I did to do this, then I would use your thumb and index finger to pinch your nose to make sure you're not going to get mascara on it. And then they said to like blink while turning your head. This is something I have done before, although I haven't done it in a long time. So maybe I should go back to that. We'll see today. So find the inside. Then I'm going to remove, pinch like this, and blink as I turn my head. Nice. It worked! Nailed it! Best hack they've given me thus far. Truly, what a good That's hack. Perfect. The next thing they said for the bottom lashes is to do the same thing, hold the wand and turn your head, but don't blink into it this time. So I'm gonna do that. I would usually hold mine vertically and kind of brush through them lightly like this, kind of fanning, but I'm gonna use their hack. Okay. There we go. Definitely my favorite hack of Yay. the whole tutorial. And honestly, if I only find one thing that sticks and works for me, I'm happy. That's what I change. Yeah. So that's independence. This is like because the 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 hardest part for me is a bold lip, which we will get to, and mascara. Those are the two things that if I'm gonna need help, that's what I need help with. So if I have found a mascara hack that allows me to do mascara without needing help to clean it up after, like. That's amazing. Okay. Now it's always harder doing this, the eye that's not your dominant hand. Okay. Okay, this is where it gets hard. Good job. Okay, this is so exciting. Uh -huh. Yes, Hadley, we found a hack that works. <laughs> okay. Pinch and do the same for the lowers. I don't think the turning of the head is like that helpful for the lowers, but if it works for you, do it. Now, they also had a nail tutorial. So if you'd like me to do a video following a blind girl nail tutorial, let me know because I'd be happy to do so because that's a struggle bus and a half for me and I just always get my nails professionally done. But I watched it out of curiosity and um, a lot of it was similar to the life skills teacher that I had who taught me years back in high school. And it didn't work for me then, but I'm happy to try again. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I think it'd be fun to give it a retry. One hack that they shared in the nail polish video that I was like, praise God, that's brilliant, that I feel like they should have shared in the makeup tutorial is for the wand, putting the wand back into the nail polish. This also applies to lip gloss. Um, mascara and I really loved it and I've never done it and sometimes I go to slide it in and I like hit the bottle or miss or whatever so their hack was to put the wand horizontally across the top and then slide it oh. till you feel the opening and put it in oh, so good brilliant so now I don't have like gross mascara on the outside of my tube or like sticky lip gloss on the outside of the tube. So that's another hack that I will 100% be using even though I stole it from the nail polish video. It totally applies to mascara and lip gloss as well. Wow. Boom, brilliant, love it. Wow. 
Hey friends, sorry, me from a couple hours later, got my bangs trimmed, eyebrows waxed, hair curled. I'm looking like a whole different human, but it is the same day. Um, I totally forgot one of their final tips, which was after you do your mascara to take a cotton ball with water and like run around your bottom lash and your upper lash to remove anything. Now, if you want to do this, I would recommend doing your mascara first before you do any other product. Reason being, you are risking smudging other products or even removing other products. Um, I would also recommend using micellar water on the cotton pad instead of water. Micellar water is like a lightweight, non-oil based makeup remover. So that's going to remove it way better than water. It's going to lessen the likelihood of smudging, though it will remove other makeup. So if you want to use that tip and that's what's going to make you feel more comfortable doing mascara, I would do it your mascara first, use micellar water on a cotton pad, wipe, and then do the rest of your face. Being a blind person and accommodating your own disability is completely unique and individual. What's going to work for one blind person doesn't work for all blind people. And that's why it's so important to forgive yourself. If you can't do something that another blind person can, that's totally okay. If you really struggle to do your makeup, that's okay. You don't have to look at blind girls on social media who are really good at their makeup and feel less than. Okay, I'm just gonna add on to what Molly earlier was saying. As a blind person, it is okay that you are not good at everything because guess what? Sighted people aren't either. Sighted people have strengths and weaknesses and so do we as blind people. We as blind people have unique skill sets from one another. We're not all the same. And so forgive yourself, be kind to yourself, focus on the things that you're good at and forget the rest. And if there's something you want to become better at, then put the time and effort in, try t different techniques, tips, tricks, experiment, see what works for you. And if you need more help than other people, even other people in the blind community, that is okay. You are a unique individual, live your best life, live for you, forget judgment from other people, even other blind people, live for you you are good enough as you are. You are not less than because you can't do something, somebody else can. You are not less than if you are not as good at something as somebody else is. Not all things that work for me will work for you, just like some of these tips from Hadley probably will work for you, but they don't for me. But the ones that do are gonna be so helpful. So it's just about experimenting. Just be kind to yourself. Rome wasn't built in a day. You will not gain all the skills you need to live independently and successfully as a blind person overnight. It takes years and years of practice and dedication and time. Now that is all for eyes. We are on to the lips. Liner. Liner is something I pretty much always avoid unless a sighted person is there to help me. So this is going to be interesting and I really hope that this is a hack that works for me. This is a red lip liner. As I said, with a basic lip color, I'm generally fine, unless it's something like a matte liquid lip, then I have to be a little more precise, but with like a cream finished lipstick, I'm pretty okay on a daily basis, but when I do bold lips, where you have to be super accurate and precise, particularly because I have such fair skin, um, I can have a little more challenge. So let's dive in with their hack. This is the Lady Bold Lip Liner. I think it's so stinking cute, you guys, the like clicker on the bottom. It's one you don't have to sharpen, which I love. Anything that clicks up or twists up, we love that. I, I avoid pencil sharpening shavings like the plague, okay? Um, but this is a click up and the clicker is a little heart shape. It's like a little tactile heart. I think it's so stinking cute. You might not be able to see it, but... Yeah, you can see it. Oh, you can. Mm -hmm. Well, you can. I can. <laughs> <laughs> My blind folks definitely won't. <laughs> um, I really love this lip liner of any lip liner I have tried because it's super creamy. And so that is going to make it easier to apply. Um, they also recommended putting on a thin layer of a clear lip balm before you apply to make it easier to glide. I didn't do that. Let me go put a lip balm on. Mm -hmm. I'll be back. All right, let's apply this lip balm. All lip applied. Balm. That said, I do think with like a creamy formula of lip liners, you won't need to do that, but I'm doing it because they told me to. And that's what this video is. Now, I'm so interested. Oh, I'm nervous. Speaking of brows, um, they didn't have an eyebrow tutorial. Uh, that would be another thing I think that would be great for them to do because brows truly frame your face. Like they are the foundation of your face. That said, um, I would definitely recommend saving up to do microblading. It is like a blind girl lifesaver. What I did for my microblading, I've had the microbladed for four or five years now, and I, I kept the same shape. I was 
blessed with a good brow shape. I'm very grateful for that. So I didn't change the shape or thickness of my brow. I simply darkened them um, because my brows were much lighter than my actual hair. So that's what I did to make sure I don't have to fill them in. But you can go crazy, girl. Like, do whatever you want. I just think it's the safest route is to just fill in what you already have to make it a little bit bolder or darker and frame your face. They also said to put a little foundation on your lips to make it last longer. We'll see, okay. I think it was that, yeah, foundation first, then the lip balm. Yeah, this feels really it, it probably will help. I've seen people do that. I've heard, I've heard of this before. I've just never done it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe like, a little bit rubbing, more rubbing in the bottom, yeah. There, that's good. And then the lip balm. Actually looks quite nice. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Molly with no lips. <laughs> Wow, the queen of lipstick thinks oh. that mm, my foundation lips look good? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Your eyes look really sparkly. Yeah. So they said to, of course, keep it sharp, just like the liner. As I said, this one is a click up, which makes it really easy. And then they said to hold it close to the tip so that you have more control. They said to take your pointer finger and put it in your lip dip. This is going to be your Cupid's bow. So that kind of place in the middle of your upper lip where it kind of dips down. They said to place your finger there. They say to slightly part your lip, then start where your finger is placed and trace your upper lip going from the inside to the outer corner. And as you get closer to the outer corner, you lighten up your stroke. Okay. I guess over time you're gonna to get to know your lip shape. Yeah, well that's how I do my lipstick. That's good, that's good. It's just knowing my lip shape. Yeah. But let's... Oh, this part, this is where it gets tricky. Yeah. Because I can't switch hands, you oh, know? Yeah, like, yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. I'm left handed. It's not like I can, like. Not easy. <laughs> how do I. How do I. How do I switch? Okay. Uh, little strokes getting lighter as I go out. So there's the upper lip. Now they said to do the same for the bottom lip. Place your finger right under the center of your bottom lip. Go from the middle out and then middle out again. Little strokes getting lighter as you go to the outside. There's my liner application. Not bad at all. Be honest with me, sighted folks. What do you think? All right, on to our Lady Bold lipstick. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. This is the Lady Bold lipstick in Lady Bold. It's a bright red shade that matches that liner. Now they said to use your finger as you roll it up to feel how much is rolled up and it should be rolled just above the plastic. All right, it's the exact same technique for the lipstick. I'm gonna use my finger to feel where the point is to make sure I'm holding it the correct direction. Put my finger in the middle and then just go in. Now what they say to do is to take your finger and to lightly kind of go over it to smudge it all and blend it. I would usually just like curl my lips in and smush them together, but so that is by using the finger. Then, now because you're using your fingers multiple times throughout this process, dotting on the foundation, touching the end of the mascara wand, blending out the, the uh, liner, blending out the lips, I would definitely recommend having a wet makeup remover towelette around so you can kind of wipe your fingers off. That's just a, that's just a me recommendation. Um, so now they say to blot with the toilet paper. And then the last piece of advice they have is to use your finger to wipe the front of your teeth. A piece of advice that I would have is using the lollipop technique. You basically take your pointer finger, put it in your mouth and like pull out. So I'll just, it's hard to explain. It sounds really, it sounds dirty. Get your mind out of the gutters, my friends, okay? Mind out of the gutters! <laughs> and what that's gonna do is if there's any lipstick right on that kind of inner rim where it would get onto your teeth, it's gonna end up around your finger and then you can just use that same thing and wipe your finger off. And there we have the lips based on how they told me to do it. And here is the completed look via the Hadley makeup tutorial for the blind. Now that the face is done, I wanna talk about some of their other general tips and share a few more of my opinions. One of the tips that they had for people with low vision is to use a magnifying mirror with a light. There's lots of different light up magnifying mirrors. This is definitely a great tip. A tip that I would add to this is that you can always take a photo and zoom in once you're done 
or if you use like a MacBook, uh, you could open Photo Booth and zoom in and then be able to like live see your face there as well. So those are just tips that I would recommend using if you have more remaining vision. They also recommended having a sighted person help check you out at the end. This is definitely something I always recommend. Just makes me feel more confident and comfortable leaving the house knowing that for sure a sighted person has given me the okay stamp of approval. If you do not live with somebody sighted, you live on your own, you can always FaceTime your mom, FaceTime your dad, FaceTime a friend, your partner, or of course there's apps like Be My Eyes that can help as well. And then just some of my final thoughts, as I've already stated a few times, this is definitely more for beginners and I'd love to see them get into more advanced techniques like false lashes, liquid liner, winged liner, cut crease, uh, multicolored eyeshadow looks, things like that. And I would love to hear them do more product recommendations or kind of how to's with like products, how, layer, how to layer them, um, uh, things like that, suggestions that I have would be things like using a cream lipstick instead of a liquid lipstick. Um, as I said, using a pressed powder over a loose powder. Having them share more tips and basic tricks like that would also be very helpful. I think something that you should think of is using eyeshadow palettes that are very uh, simple. So neutral colors and they follow a line. An example of this would be the Tartlet palette or what I have here, the Kaja Bento boxes. It goes lightest color to darkest color. There's only three shadows. It's a cohesive eye look. So you know you can use all three of these to create a look and it's going to work together. I would also personally recommend getting professionally color matched. Um, it is worth getting your foundation and concealer in particular professionally color matched because there's so much subtlety and slight differences that getting professionally color matched can make a really big difference. And you can do that at any beauty counter or you can do that at stores like Sephora and Ulta. But of course, as you guys know, I have lots of other tips and tricks. If you guys would like to see an updated makeup tutorial showing off my face versus this face, let me know. If you guys have any tips or tricks, also let me know. I'd love to try some of your hacks and let me know if any of these things work for you. Again, just because they don't work for me doesn't mean they won't work for you. And I'm obsessed with some of the hacks that I learned, like the mascara trick and how to put the wand back in without getting it everywhere. So those are two things that I'll be taking away from this and bringing into my everyday makeup routine. And I'm really excited to keep practicing it. And subscribe and hit the notification bell so when videos like that do come out, you're notified and ready to watch. Thank you to Hadley for being such a great resource for blind people. Again, they don't know who I am. This isn't sponsored, but definitely check them out if you're in the blind community. I think you could find even just one or two simple tricks that could help you in your every single day life. And until next time, you can click over here for a hair curling tutorial as a blind girl or over here for one of my OG makeup videos. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Bye.